Hello YouTube, welcome back to Dremel 2.2, the beta. This is episode 2, and I know I ended last episode on a cliffhanger, where I was going to go fight Skull Disciple Ossine, and I just did that, and I will show you the clip in a second. Um, but I am definitely not ready for this boss fight, so I have to do a bit more upgrading before I am ready to fight him. More specifically, I need to get an enchanted bow of some kind. Uh, but anyway, here's the clip of me fighting him and realizing that, yeah, he is way too strong for how I am right now. Wait, why are there exp- Whoa, what? Okay, so yes, it seems like Ossine did get quite a few buffs and some new abilities in this version of the map. So, I'm definitely not ready to fight him. <laughs> so, I think what I'm gonna do is go on a quick training arc, an upgrade arc, um, where I retreat from here and go to a more- Desolate place than the desolation. Uh, we're gonna head to the island of Sod. Because the only thing better than having one mythical sword is having a second mythical sword. And uh, I'm pretty sure that Sod should have higher end armor than what I have right now. And hopefully I can get a better bow and arrows over there. On my way to the southern coast, and I came across this place. Um, it doesn't look ruined at all. Welcome to Port Solitude. Avast! Keep your wits about ye and this roguish dwarf, full to the bursting with the spirit of nautical competition. Discovered Port Solitude, sacred place of Dar. Ah oh, man, I know Dar is like a I think he's one of the deities. I don't remember the lore that well. But this is interesting. It's a brand- it's not even like a little port, you know, Port Solitude. Uh, no, this is a brand new town. It's a village. That's cool. Whoa, what's in here? Whoa, what's this place? Place your offerings to Abyssal Elder Dar here. Oh, I think Dar is the sea god in Dremel. Um, so, oh, these might be a little bit more tricky to get than the other items because they're sea related. Prismarine shards. Oh, nice. Okay, so that's a little bit more. Sea pickles. All right, so shards are a bit important to get. Ink sacks. Sponge. I mean, sponges are useful. I have some. Writ of authority. Thou hast been blessed by the favor of the king. Rejoice in hydration. When in offhand, plus attack speed. Okay, much how the Drahua temple had the statue made out of the moss that can be thrown in here, I've discovered an easy way to upgrade this one, and it is with the sea lanterns. And yeah, these work as well, and they are... Not the lowest tier, which is very nice. Okay, so after a lot of swimming and a lot of stabbing fish, we have Writ of Authority plus three, which is the highest one. Your devotion can be deep and no further. And all these have different descriptions. So we have, uh, you've been blessed by the favor of the king, rejoice in hydration. Let the tumult of the roiling waves be thy strength. Uh, thine enemies, per force, bend knee at the sight. Ne'er <laughs> have they reckoned with the deep ocean's might. Long before the felling of the primal tree, Dar's mortal subjects lived on low Dar with a vast warm sea. Though the Abyssal Elder's siblings changed the moon greatly, he retained the powers of kingship. Plus 20 attack speed. Uh, so this thing makes me swing very fast. How fast exactly? So let's see, Ascendance is 1, full charge 2, 3, 4. Let's try it with this now. 1, 2, 3, 4. Yeah. A little bit faster, not enough. I still think I like Perennium because it gives me the movement speed. Um, <laughs> I've done a lot of swimming in these waters and stabbed a lot of squid and fish to be able to <laughs> get rid of authority maxed out. But anyways, that is done. We are setting sail and going to the island of Sod, the beautiful land of cherry trees and trying to get frenzy. And I just realized that I'll have to do the secret quest on Sod, which is a treasure hunt, and it's a little annoying, so let's go to it. Alrighty, after that quick time lapse, I am here at a boat. And this boat is definitely one of Sod's, I recognize the architecture. And also, I don't know if I was going in the right direction. I just kind of picked a general southwest or southeastern <laughs> direction and went for it. Uh, that's ancient debris. Oh, crap. I don't have a diamond pickaxe. There's ancient debris right here. Okay. Um, 2908666104. Uh, I got to screenshot that for myself because that's major. 
Why is there ancient debris just randomly on this ship all the way out here? And after another long boat trip, we are here on the island of Sod. So let's see what is different about this land. And also, let me get some of this, because I need some of that. <laughs> I need some food. I'm always very low on food. Okay, top here, this is where the first fragment usually is. And it still is, the fragment of hate. Yep, we have to find the five fragments and construct frenzy. Uh, I know where they used to be. I don't know if any of them moved, but I guess let's just get started on it. The Forgotten City. The island of Sod was wiped from history by Fertide's Tide Queen, leaving them in isolation for hundreds of years. Discovered New Sod. Now, Sod is a very pretty city. Also, is that tower new, too? I feel like they had a lot up on the mountains, but I could be wrong. Okay, I've been going around the town looting a bunch of stuff. I'm here at the Purple Blade Blacksmith, where this guy has something interesting I just clicked on. I didn't read anything yet. But we have Runic Amplifiers. A small device powered by a Runic Catalyst. In the hands of a skilled artisan, it can be used to supercharge in inscribed runes, effectively tripling the potential of the material they are carved upon. So, uh, one of these, and it is kind of expensive, four of these catalysts, just for one of them, can get us a lot of stuff. So we have Lazulite. Blessed with Potentia, second only to Rentite's, Lapis Lazuli is far softer and easier to use. In a land where Rentite was never found, it is uniquely precious. When on our legs, it gives me, uh, plus attack damage, along with the normal diamond stuff, I think that's probably what I want. But that's really expensive. <laughs> what else do we got? We have the Pathfinder Vestment. Tradition mandates that a Pilgrim of the Way must wear this ornate red and green silken robe. Despite the garment's awkwardness, concealed runes ensure that brigands seek other targets. A lot less max health. You're faster. Plus five armor and plus one attack damage. Um, I don't really like that. That's minus four hearts. That's a lot. Instead of the Guardian Great Axe, with its iron head carved to look like a vibrant salmon, this design had an unflattering past, but was repurposed for use by the Pilgrim's sworn protectors. 18 attack damage, but very slow. That's as much as the Wave of Ascendance. Okay, for Obsidian, we can also get the Zido Tower Shield. Um, though philosophies of war are as numerous as fallen leaves in Sod, one adage is that continually what that continually resurfaces is the best offense is an impenetrable defense shields carved to use l shields carved to light enemies on fire debatably prove that saying true it has fire aspect and unbreaking does fire aspect work on shields i mean it doesn't really matter i can't get obsidian because i don't have a diamond pickaxe yet uh but that's kind of interesting <laughs> we have a fire shield that is very, I think that's very cool. Now, what I'm thinking here, current game plan, uh, as of this particular moment, is I have those two diamond leggings in my ender chest. I can repair them here with that anvil, and then I should have enough runa catalyst to be able to get one, maybe two of those armor pieces of lazulite. I'm thinking the chest plate will probably be what I will prioritize. Okay, I think I have explored every house in Sod, so we're, let's go around these random buildings and other places, get those fragments, get the teleport tower, and get on with it. The Tower of Sod. Currently linked to 21.9%. I think the next tower we get should be um, 25%, and that will give us a mini quest, I believe. A tribute to Moen for total peace, aspect of love. Fragment of Rage. Alright, that's two out of five down. Uh, let's go see what those buildings are down there. What is this little town up here? Oh, they have a bell, so they must be a really nice town. You know what that means. Ring the bell, subscribe, <laughs> all that good stuff. This is a strange village up here. Ooh, they got the goodies, though. They got the good stuff. Now, the next fragment was, and hopefully still is, deep within this normal-looking forest. It's a bit of a swamp in there, or more of like a bog, I guess. 
Uh, it just has a lot of little tiny water, shallow lakes running through it. And there's a riddle in here for one of the fragments that I hope is still the same because I do have the item needed to solve the riddle. Alrighty, and here is the riddle. I can feed you, I can be viable, protection, grant life, toss me no drink. Yep, it's a golden apple. And a fragment of wrath. And the next fragment is inside of this mansion all the way up here. But this little place down here I believe is new actually. I'm wondering what this is about. An elegy to pain. Great men, in your glory as a conqueror, or great main, in your terror as our patron deity, let my voice be heard. I call upon you to inflict pain upon our enemies, and may we be your torturous implements. Those doddering fools who worship Moen will rue the day they decided to be born. Mark my words. Oh. So it seems like. Oh, what's up there? Glory bringer. The proud and bloodthirsty Osaiga clan. Had a simple model. No pain, no gain. <laughs> 15 damage, 4 attack speed. I'll take it, it's an artifact, but I probably won't end up using it. So it seems like Saad had not really a civil war, but like had two factions that uh, did not seem to like each other. Moane and Main, I think, are the names. Now, I've done this uh, mansion a little bit before. It has, or it should have, haunted spirits in it that are zombies that are invisible. Not seeing them right now, though. Uh, but let's just go through it. There should be... Also, there's uh, something in here. Yeah, Dome Master, Imperial Architect, bless this ground. Elusive Grid Engineer, they never did find his body. <laughs> uh, these are Easter eggs for the devs. So we got Strength and Regen, and I'm digging up their graves. Now, there used to be... There, okay, there are all the spirit. Oh god. Oh god. Vexes. Yeah, those are the those are the spirits that I was talking about. Luckily for me, ascendance is very powerful. And that guy was very weak. Okay, hold on. <laughs> Uh, my inventory is not properly organized for combat right now. Nice. They breached the entrance. I'll put it in the chandelier in the Great Hall. Yeah, I know. Book, Cursed Revelation. Yep. This. So the people who like raided this building uh, ended up getting trapped here instead. Editing Shadow here. If you can't tell, doing this side quest does kind of drain my energy. I've done it so many times, and it takes a while to traverse all over the island of Sod. So, the next fragment is inside the main chandelier in the mansion. Yep. Right up here. The Fragment of Pain. That is four out of five. I believe it's on this tower. A bunch of Mikmari slash pillagers are in here. Oh, the tower looks a bit different, I think. That's very nice. <laughs> Set my spawn there. Moon and chaining table. And the fragment of fury. Uh, my inventory is very full. I got this conduit from the thing on Dar, or the thing at Dar's temple, but I don't think I'll need a conduit ever. Can I mine this? I can. Nice. Alright, we got an enchanting table. And there's a bunch of books here, but there's a bunch of books in a lot of other places too. So that is all five fragments, and now we have to head back to the mainland of Sod, go to the volcano, go to the forge, throw all these in there, and get Frenzy. Oh, and there's like a little ruin over here. That's very cool. Alrighty. Yeah, we got ruins. I don't know if there's anything worth looting in here, but these are definitely new. This building seems to be the most built still. <gasps> Ooh, we got another stone. Stone of Worry and Insurance Infinity. The cautious and devout Zado clan made sure that there was always a contingency plan. Unfortunately, these seasoned survivors cannot withstand the ravages of time. When in main hand, plus 10 max health. Well, that's very nice. It does have infinity, but it's a bit weak. I guess I'm going to take it over my bow. Stone of Worry. A rare stone with an ordinarily high... 
Potentia. Are these the same stones? Yeah, that's the same one as the one that I found in Mail's Desolation. Alrighty, here at the forge, it appears to be the exact same. Um, if you remember, there used to be this lady named Earthies here who was the forge master. Uh, but yeah, let's go get Frenzy. Wrath, Rage, Hate, Fury, and Pain. <laughs> Like, that can I? Ooh. So it does seem like that tune is indeed different for the mythics, because that sounded way different than Ascendance's. Frenzy. In the aftermath of the mutual slaughter of all three clans at Mount Narakin, the legendary Osaiga bladesmith Earthies. Oh! Crafted this sinister army killing blade while surrounded by burning prisoners. <laughs> Tens of thousands of deaths later, it was melted down and split into five fragments, which were hidden throughout the land. Fatal Rampage. Killing an enemy grants you a damage buff, stacking up to three times. That's about the same. Minus six max health, extra movement speed, 13 attack damage, two attack speed unbreakable. Hmm. That does seem very similar. I don't remember the exact stats of what it used to be in the older versions, but we got Frenzy, and it's a, it's just straight up a katana. <laughs> or a straight blade katana, I suppose, but definitely Japanese looking sword. Okay, now that we are at the end of Sod here, I think that I'm going to buy myself some Lazulite armor. And I'm gonna get two of these. And I am just realizing that I actually need the diamond armor, so... Uh, I hope this works with the broken leggings, because I can't make a chest plate. Really? Okay, fine. I should have just enough to be able to do this. Uh, I need a crafting table. I didn't think things through that much. Yes, I can make a helmet. And I can make... I should be able to repair these. Very good. Now I can get... Get lots of light leggings. Um, and a lazulite helmet. So, boom. Plus attack damage and better armor. Okay, now let's test out this new supposedly buffed frenzy here. That's very strong, actually. Oh, that's very powerful. And there's this little heartbeat thing in the background. The circle of blood has always been there. That's very nice. So, an extra 9 damage on top of the 13 gives this 21 damage at max charge, as opposed to the 15 and 18 of Ascendance. So, when Frenzy is at max charge, this is very powerful, actually, yeah. Definitely buffed. Okay, I'm back. It is actually the next day for me recording this. I've been planning my next move. I think I need to get enchanted armor to go fight Ossine so I don't get one shot again. And I've come up with a game plan for this. So I'm here back in the Heartwood because now that I have Frenzy... Why is that looping? Okay, that was weird. Uh, <laughs> it was on... Slow falling was on two seconds when I was in midair and then it reset. That was kind of strange. But anyway, since I have Frenzy, uh, this weapon is very, very, very good at killing a large horde of enemies, and I need to get experience to enchant my armor so that I can fight Ossine better. So there is an area on the map, and it's not the Heartwood, and it's not uh, like the cave under the Heartwood, but there's an area that has a lot of mobs that's really easy to fight, and it is the Black Tunnel beneath for Tide. So I'm going to make my way through the Labyrinth over to... For Tide and the Black Jungle. And also, wow, is this not like, you know, an anime training arc? I went to uh, the Japanese inspired Sod, and now I'm going to the Japanese inspired for Tide to <laughs> do a training arc to become stronger, to defeat an evil villain. And also, not only is Frenzy like kind of a katana, um, Masayoshi is there, which is another katana. So, yeah, this is literally an anime episode. But there are many things along the way to Furtide, such as the town of Gozak. Or Gozak. <laughs> uh, I don't remember how it's called. I want to see if anything is new or different in here. I'm sure there's a wandering uh, villager. 
Again, welcome to Gazak. The people of the Heartwood. Gifts to Dremel Deity of Preservation. Well, this statue is immediately new, and I think these are all things that can go uh, in the Dracula Temple, but I have that maxed out, so I don't need to worry about that. Oh, here's something new. The Rudic Blacksmith has barbed armor, a wolfkin mass, and branch leaper strides. Barbed helmet, thorns four. The only Heartwood Kingdom flourishing today, the people of Gozak, have learned through hard-won experience to live harmoniously with the forest. Their ironwood resembles layers of leaves and thorny vines. Uh, gives extra attack speed, as well as armor, and thorns. That's pretty good, actually. Uh, the Wolfkin Mask. Fire Protection 3, Aquafinity Dexter. Adorned with berries, leaves, and fungi, this sinister iron mask is made so that its wearer can see with, with eyes unclouded by fear of the Heartwood's hazards. Plus 5 armor, plus 1 armor toughness. I mean, that's okay. It's not crazy. Branch Leaper Strides, Unbreaking 3. Though it takes some practice, a certain, e a certain uneven gait, which mimics the forest dwellers, allows the wearer to build up great speed. Alright, let's see it. I gotta get this out of my hands. Okay, so we have the Heartwood, we have the Tower, we have Gozak. The Labyrinth, there's something up north, and then south there's a set of buildings. I don't recall if I went to that set of buildings. That might be the ruins on the edge of the desolation that I found last episode. I didn't cover them much, but there's a bunch of ruins and, like, tree houses and stuff. I'm pretty sure that's what it is. I am very interested about that place up north, though. I think I should be able to reach that through the labyrinth over by uh, my Easter egg. My Easter egg should be right over here. Nice. I wonder if they updated anything about it at all. Probably not, but I like to come here. Rip Eddie, he wasn't a llama. Yep, Eddie's saddle. Oh, did they take out the diamond? I'm pretty sure there used to be a diamond in here. If you are at all possibly new to my channel, you might be confused. Uh, in my very first playthrough of Dremel, I had a donkey, which I named Eddie, Eddie. And fun fact, I named him Eddie because Eddie Murphy voices Donkey and Shrek, I think. I'm pretty sure. That's why I named him that anyways. <laughs> also, I'm heading up to this mark on the map, and I don't know how I think I missed it. Isn't this Castle Scarstone, where 1,000 Scars is? The castle on that map is actually something different, but I will explore that later in the full release of this update. I have to leave some things for the next playthrough, <laughs> sadly. Uh, but I go through uh, the Black Castle into 1,000 Scars. I loot uh, some armor and some other stuff along the way, but for the most part, it's the same. And let's go to 1,000 Scars. Okay. 1,000 Scars. The Ancient Blade of the First of Eve unlocked. Sweeping Edge 1. The First of Eve is shrouded in mystery to most living today, as the land itself was largely destroyed by the felling of the primal tree. Yet, even after Dremel's reforging, traces remain. This ancient greatsword yearns for its long-lost partner. Interesting. Spectre Blade. Oh, this has an ability now. It used to just... Did it ever? Oh my god. Oh, I panicked there. Well, that was, it, that was its ability. I don't know what that was, but that was cool. Yeah, this never had an ability before. Let's see. Spectre Blade. Fully charged attacks from this sword cause an explosion of negative energy centered around the target. So Alrighty. And I'm here in the Black Jungle. Actually, I'm right next to Fertide. And as you can see, there's quite a bit of upgrades already. Um, the Kiln of Virtue is that way, and I've heard it received a gigantic upgrade. And I'm wondering just how big those upgrades were. And it's starting to come into render. It's definitely a lot bigger. Um, I believe it was one of the teaser images. Also, the bridge is different. I think the soul fire is new and the like patterned actual bridge. That is big. Or <laughs> kind of looks like the Taj Mahal to me. Not exactly, but like uh, the kind of big dome in the middle with all the spires around it. Okay, so the entrance looks pretty similar to the last one. 
However, oh, yep, yeah, of course we'd have the uh, this place now. Virtuo, goddess of protection, requests your offerings. You don't place them here. She specifically asks for them. Oh, wow. This is very pretty. Hold on, let me take off the speed. That is intricate. That's very pretty. I'm also noticing that Rentite, the Sea Lanterns, is touching things in this version of the map, which used to not be the case. Pontiff Vahid, the warrior. I'm looking for the items to offer her. I assume they'd be uh, Prismarine related. Okay, I'm back. Let's start getting things. So, it works with Azure Crystals, which this should be really easy to get because there are these things all over. Or do these only give the shards? Do they have to be named, I wonder? Let's do a test on that. Okay, no, they're all just called Azure Crystals because that's the name of them on this texture pack. Azure Crystals and Quartz. Those are items we can give to this devotion system. Any secrets in here? No. Th this place is very pretty, though. It's extremely intricate. Is this place really dark enough for... monsters to spawn, though? I guess I'm used to the newer versions of Minecraft, where monsters spawn in zero light instead of low light. Uh, it seems weird to me that they would be spawning in here at all. Oh, that's why I'm so weak. Yeah. I just got jump scared by that noise. I thought it was a creeper. Right, these boots are fast. I threw away my other boots, uh, but they do extremely reduce my movement or my attack damage. Ebis Elvira the Healer. Ooh, emeralds. I don't really need emeralds, though. There's a second story. Or perhaps bigger. Does this go to the roof? It does indeed go to the roof. There's a little room in here. This place is huge. I really wonder how long it took them to build it. It is it's very designed. Countenance of Virtuo. Donated by the donated to the kiln by Akari, a renowned Islamic artisan. This gleaming decorative helmet displays a stylized depiction of the goddess's then, then perfectly symmetrical face. What happened to her face? <laughs> if it says then perfect, uh, this was usually at the bottom of the pool. It was a helmet that has really good respiration and aqua affinity. The goddess's then perfect. Symmetrical face. What happened to Virtuo, I wonder? I have no idea. <laughs> Let's keep going around. We're getting a lot more lore on her. I wonder if we'll get more lore of Malice. Virtuo, our Lady of the Mirror. Of course diamonds would be something that you can donate. Of course it would be. I mean, you know, I'm, I'm, hold on. I'm looking at that face. That looks pretty symmetrical to me, I will say. Also, she's orange, I guess. <laughs> I don't know how accurate that is. There is um, an artist on the Dremel Discord, Hiscotti Biscotti, who draws the characters sometimes. I'm trying to remember how they draw Virtuo, but... Definitely not orange, I don't think. Uh, I also don't know if their art is canon or not. But anyways. Uh, they are the artist credited for this map. Is that gold? Oh. No, it's just glass. I should probably put this on. What, like I'm not gonna dig to the bottom of- oh god, that's lava. <laughs> okay, well, I thought it was gonna be like, something secrety under there, and there probably is, but I'm not gonna go through the lava to figure that out. And you know that Virtuo is the best deity, because 
she has a bell. I mean, come on. You know, it speaks for itself. Truly the goddess of perfection, if she knows that bells are so important. Anyways, uh, let's get started on this thing. I wonder what room I'm gonna- or what item I'm gonna get. I mean, it did give me a diamond. Okay, that is very... a lot. <laughs> um, however, I'm not gonna spend all my diamonds. I do need to get a diamond pickaxe still. I do need to remind myself that this is Minecraft and I need to get diamond stuff. That's a shame that that missed. Oh, that... That minus 90% really does a number. Now, there's probably other items I can give for this. Uh, okay, lapis. I have a lot of lapis. I'll need to go get an ender chest, though. But let's see what this does. I have 14 should be enough to get the first one. Alrighty, we got purifying light plus zero. You have a you have lit a flame that symbolizes your devotion to the goddess of purity. It is small but flickers in a perfectly steady rhythm. Movement speed. It's, it's plus ten percent movement speed and plus zero zero seven. Uh, I don't understand the differences between. The plus movement speed and the percentage movement speed. I think it's a little weird. This map uses both. But, well, I'm gonna go around and collect a lot of crystals. Because if this makes me faster than Perennium, I mean, Virtuo might be my new favorite character in the lore. <laughs> okay, much simping later for this goddess. And I have got all four of the purifying lights. Um, I think the textures for plus zero and plus one may be backwards. Because it goes from, it's a candle, and the candle goes from medium, to tall, to short, to a, a little bit shorter. Is there a texture difference between these two? It's kind of hard to tell. It gets purple. So yeah, it goes medium, tall, short, and then purple. Let's read it. So, it is small, but flickers in a perfectly steady rhythm. The wax grows as the candle burns. Oh, okay, never mind. It's not backwards, it's just weird. <laughs> the wax grows as the candle burns, dripping slowly upward in radially symmetric lines. Its candle has grown so large as to require a lantern for conveyance. Shh, get out of here. Okay. Uh, its candle has grown so large as to require a lantern for conveyance, yet you feel rested and agile when holding it. For millennia, I didn't know the many wrongdoings of those who incited my birth. But fragments of memory gave me suspicions, and now, at last, I know the truth. I will do what I can one day to earn Nardul's forgiveness. I don't know what any of that means. Is that Virtuo talking? Or is that, like, a priest? What's going on there? Okay, so it's... <laughs> uh, that's weird. It's in a lantern. So it gets bigger as it grows. That's very interesting. Uh, so this is Perennium Plus 3's. Pay attention to the FOV. And this is uh, the light. That is quite a bit faster. Holding that with Frenzy. We are now quite fast. I don't think this is as fast as Calamity by itself, but this is quite fast. So... 028. What is what is Pernium plus 3 close to? So 10% movement speed is more similar to uh, It's somewhere between 7 and 14. So this should be about double speed I think of Perennium. Or roughly, maybe. I don't know. Uh, but yeah, I think that so far is the best devotion system. Well, Perennium gives you a lot of stats, um, speed is the best, undoubtedly. And also, it gave me some potions, a totem of undying, a stack of stripped birch logs, uh, with, and also a, um, where is it, a mending book. So, that kiln gives you very many good items, and it's not that hard to upgrade, because... Okay, I've exp I've been exp 
Okay, I've been exploring the city for a long time, and this place is gigantic now, so we're just gonna go and do what I came here to do. I'm gonna head in here, grab Masayoshi, see what else is new inside of this place. They got new carpeting, I think. Palace Gardens, this is where Masayoshi usually is. Dedicated to the demise of the despicable Tide Queen, may her tyranny rest with her. Oh. Hmm. It's not there this time. Where is Masayoshi? Uh, Palace Staff Quarters. I doubt it would be in here. It's probably upstairs. But it's moved. Which is interesting. If I had to guess, it's probably the very, very top. This place is so large. Just all of it. This entire city is so big. Uh, precepts of the title dynasty. Mind of the tides, take territory when the ocean falls away, <laughs> and reinforce what you have when it rises again. When the ocean falls away, so the tides are, like, super high and super low in Dremel? I guess that would make sense with, like, how many astral bodies orbit this planet, or this realm. Make peace with the powerful, be a stalwart friend to those who could crush you until you can crush them. In times of rebellion, <laughs> start a war. Direct revolution outwards. Nothing sticks in the memory like fire. Use it sparingly to set an example. Jeez. That's intense. Also, I think there used to be, like, blood in this area, like, just redstone dust on the ground. Pretty sure. Ooh, a diamond. And some more bits of treasure. Question in my head still is, where's Masayoshi? Unless there was supposed to be a chest uh, where she was buried. I don't think that's the case, though. Uh, my other guess is it's probably beneath this place. Nailed it. Now, I don't remember where exactly the tunnel starts. I believe it starts over here. Yes. You know, it's more... Ooh. Oh, it's really sealed off this time. Hmm. I don't know where Masayoshi is. It could be anywhere in this city, and this city is gigantic. Uh, there was something I saved for this. Where is my... I had a night vision potion. Hmm. Uh, maybe not. Welp. Let's go down here. Oh. Oh. The black tunnel isn't here anymore. Whoa. Take out these boots, right? Hold on, I'm fighting stuff. Yeah, these boots are making me weak. I'm still doing really good damage with them, though. So, the black tunnel either isn't here or is behind this gate. This is very interesting. I don't think I have anything that would give off light here. I really thought I had a night vision potion. Uh, so hopefully you guys can see well enough. This is not what I was expecting. Oh, this is so bizarre. So we got, like, dungeon cells beneath the Tide Palace. Oh, there's... <laughs> that definitely looks like Masayoshi. It's a big sword with red around it. That's what it usually is. This is interesting, though. I wonder if the giant black cave is still here, even. Because that usually starts the side quest up to the north... Uh, which eventually leads to oblivion. 
or it has in the past. It is obviously very different this time. What lies in here? A chamber of much death beneath me. And Masayoshi. The Tide Queen was born with unlimited potentia, granting her the ability to regenerate decaying cells within living bodies. A master artisan from a land she erased from history crafted this bloodthirsty blade for her, and she used its strengths without its drawbacks to rule for thousands of years. Every hit with this sword deals half a heart of damage to you. 14 attack speed plus 2 attack speed. Or er, 14 damage, 2 attack speed plus movement speed. Okay. Well, it is still dark down here and there's a lot of mobs. So, I guess I will use Frenzy and Masayoshi to cut through all the mobs in this cave here, but that is all the time I probably have for this episode. Uh, this has been a very long one. I did not expect all the stuff in the Black Jungle to take as long as this did. So, I guess off camera I'm gonna fight a bunch of these guys and try to get to level 30 so that I can start to enchant my armor. But, thank you guys so much for watching. And I'll see you in the next video. Bye-bye.